Palm Sunday and the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. So today in the USA, uh, Palm Sunday is celebrated in many churches throughout the land. Growing up as a Roman Catholic, I can remember this uh, day very well. At the end of the Catholic Mass in the back lobby, there'd be a couple of men uh, passing out uh, palm leaves, uh, the, the long leaves which would come forth from the uh, palm tree. I used to get a nice big piece if I could, and then I would go home and cut it into smaller pieces. I used to make little crosses out of it. You take one piece, put a little slice in there, and uh, insert one piece into the other, and you have a cross. Sometimes you'd put it in your car maybe tie it around your uh, rear view mirror or put it on the dashboard or something. You know, I thought it was a cool thing to do. I thought it was holy, but I didn't know the Lord. <laughs> I was on my way to hell, as I always tell you. I had no idea uh, basically what I was doing. I just knew that uh, you were getting something on Palm Sunday. You know, people used to uh, talk about certain people who would only go to a Catholic Mass uh, on Palm Sunday uh, and Ash Wednesday. They used to call them A&P Catholics. I thought that was kind of funny. But anyway, uh, so this is the day that is celebrated today, but many people uh, do not realize that this day which is celebrated was uh, actually a day that was the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. That's what makes uh, this day exciting. So let's go to uh, the New Testament book of Matthew chapter 21. We're going to look at verses 1 through 9. It says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, uh, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway or immediately ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway or immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, or Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the cult, and put on them their clothes, and they set him, meaning Christ, thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory to God. So as I said, this event, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that took place in which uh, today they're celebrating Palm Sunday. Let me explain how they came up with that uh, title, Palm Sunday. So uh, here the Lord, he, he, he knows he's going to be riding into Jerusalem. He's going to be coming in just the way the prophet said he would. So he sent his disciples and said, look, go get this ass in this uh, cult and bring them to me. If anybody says, you know, why are you doing this? Just tell them that the Lord has need of them. And that's exactly what happened, by the way. So the Lord was actually prophesying. He knew all things. And it's exactly what happened. Somebody uh, saw what they were doing and said, what are you doing here? And, and they turned around and said, the Lord has need of these. And he said, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool the way prophecy works. It said, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. So this uh, event that took place with, with the Lord telling his disciples to go get that cult and the ass and so on, it was all prophesied. You'll, we're going to get to that in a couple of seconds here. So uh, what we learn here uh, is that prophecy was fulfilled, as I said. We learn that Jesus Christ was a king because he's fulfilling the prophecy of a king, okay, 
coming into Jerusalem. So let's see what else we can see here. Let's go back to Zechariah. That's the Old Testament book, uh, chapter 9, verse 9. This is the prophecy that we are talking about. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, upon the colt, the foal of an ass. So, we see if Christ fulfilled this prophecy, folks, that he is the king, as I said once again, he's the king, he's just, and it says he having salvation. Salvation is found in the king, and Christ is is that king. Christ is the prophesied king that the prophet Zechariah was speaking about. He's the Messiah. He was the Messiah that the people of Israel were waiting for, but missed for the most part. When Christ came into the world, when he came into uh, Jerusalem, he was rejected by the greater part, the most uh, uh, part of uh, the people of Israel. They didn't want anything to do with him, yet he was the prophesied Messiah, the prophesied King, the prophesied Redeemer, if you would. Let's go to John now, get some more clarity here, the book of John, New Testament. We'll go to chapter 12. We're going to look at verses 12 through 16. It says, On the next day, much people that would come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried hosanna blessed is the king of israel that cometh in the name of the lord and jesus when he had found a young heir sat thereon as it is written fear not daughter of sion or zion behold thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt these things understood not his disciples at the first but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. So we, we learn here uh, in the Gospel of John, it says they took branches of palm trees. Do you see that? So this is how we uh, they came up with uh, that uh, holiday, the Palm Sunday. You see, Palm Sunday. So it, it was a fulfillment of prophecy. The time when Christ, the prophesied king, would come into Jerusalem, the one having salvation. So he's called here the king of Israel. Don't miss this, folks. So what does this say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you think about it? Uh, the, the, for the most part, the, the majority of the people of Israel reject Christ until this day. They don't believe he's the Messiah. Oh, no, they don't. I've spoken to many Jewish people. They think you're crazy uh, calling him Messiah. They brush you off. They think you're silly or something. So here, here we have, we, we believe in the Messiah of Israel. We believe in the true king of Israel. We know for a fact, if you've been born again of the Spirit, you know that he is indeed the Messiah, the fulfillment of this prophecy. He is the Redeemer. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the Son of David. All of these things fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we see John uh, made it very clear uh, that he knew that Christ was indeed the one who was spoken about in that prophecy. So uh, it's beautiful the way the scriptures work, folks. They, they, uh, they work perfectly together from Old Testament into the New. Let's go to Luke now. It says in um, Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 32, it says, and when the days of her purification, speaking of Mary, according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him, meaning Christ, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's 
Christ or Messiah. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Wow. So I backtrack, folks, to when Christ uh, was born. And this, uh, this day that I'm talking about here actually took place 40 days after, 40 days later from the time when Christ was born into the world. But I wanted you to see this, folks, because there was a man named Simeon who was promised by the Lord, promised that he would see the Christ, that he would see the Lord's salvation. Oh, yes, before he saw the Lord's Christ, the Messiah. So here, uh, they call this the presentation. Mary and Joseph came in 40 days after the birth. Now, why 40 days? Because these were the days of her purification, meaning Mary. You know, the, 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 the Jewish women were, were seen to be unclean or impure during that 40 days, and they weren't even allowed into the temple. So when, when that day came, when, when the 40 days passed, they took Christ that day, okay, uh, basically consecrating him uh, to the Lord, the day of presentation. So this is what took place here. And this man, Simeon, he had a promise from God that he would see the Messiah before he died. Oh, yes. So the Spirit of God was upon him. I don't want you to miss this. The Spirit of God was upon Simeon, and he walked in there. He was walking in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And, and, and he saw Christ, and he went and, and he held the child. His Jesus, uh, 40 days old, he's holding this child in his arms. And, and it, it's so awesome. And he blessed God. And he said, Lord, now let thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. It's beautiful. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. And I bring this uh, to you because you remember when, when Christ came riding into uh, Jer Jerusalem, it says he was having salvation. So here, here we have Christ as, as 40 days old, and, and this man uh, promised by God would see the Messiah, and now the Holy Ghost was upon him, folks, and he knew it, and he knew that he was holding the salvation of Almighty God within his arms, and he's basically saying, God, let me die now. I can go because the promise that you made to me that I would see the Messiah has been fulfilled. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that the Jewish people need to believe what this man Simeon believed, that there's no postponement of the gospel, folks. Either they take this Christ that I preached to you today as Lord and Savior, or they reject him. Oh, yes. So this happened, what, close to 2,000 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Think about that for a couple of seconds. So here this man Simeon knew that he saw the salvation when he came as a young child. So here we have him saying that, and then we have Christ riding into Jerusalem having salvation. So if you're Jewish out there or Gentile, I'm here to tell you today that the Christ that I preached to you today, you need him. You die without him, you will die in your sins. You will die and you will go to hell. This is how real this uh, is, ladies and gentlemen. Let me close it out here with Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. This was uh, the apostle uh, Peter uh, speaking with the Holy Ghost upon him. He said, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. There was a man healed. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So here we have Peter all those years ago, folks, pushing 2,000 years. Come on, this is unbelievable. And he's telling them flat out, listen, guys, 
This is the one, the salvation in no other name. It, salvation is found in Christ alone. He came all, the, all those days ago, folks, almost 2,000 years ago. So, so the message of the gospel has not changed, folks. There's nothing postponed. It's either get in or stay out. Receive Christ or reject him. That's how plain this gospel is. It's either heaven or hell. It's either salvation or damnation. So what will it be for you? Uh, my friend, whether you be Jewish or Gentile, what will it be for you? Have you ever come to the place where you received the person of Jesus Christ? Be blessed in the Lord.